Welcome to our cat students. If you are watching this video, it's probably because you're looking for some tips and ideas for your cat pat. So you must pat the cat. No, I'm just kidding. So in this video, we're going to be looking at how we can lay out our spreadsheet just to get it started, just to lay it out so that we can get going with the formulas in another video and the charts in another video. So let's first look at how we can lay it out because by laying it out correctly, we can set ourselves up to get as many marks as possible for our cat pat. So by now you should have your survey done or your questionnaire done and you should have all your responses. Now if you've done a Google form then you would have downloaded the Google results. If you've done it manu or through a, a, for example a Word form then obviously you need to data capture all those results. And so you should have something that looks like this where you've got all your questions at the top and the results in that. Just plain in a spreadsheet available. It, this should be in your phase two folder. Okay so this is what I'm going to do to set up my document. Now, first of all, you, I don't have enough responses. You should have 25 responses. So we should have up until 26 because obviously the headings in row one, but I'm just using this until 21, but you need to make sure that you get until 25 or tw uh, 25 responses in total. So make sure that you've done that. Otherwise you're going to lose a mark. Okay. So first thing I'm doing, this is my raw data. So this is the data I get that's raw. So I'm actually going to rename this particular, um, the worksheet I'm going to rename it as raw data so that's the raw data this is what I want to what I'm going to eventually use to import this into access for the next part so you ideally want to make sure that the top row are your heading rows and you want to make sure that your data are all nicely defined so that's the one thing that I'm going to do so I'm going to do that um, before I even copy anything I want you just to make sure that Go through your data, just make sure that's correct, because sometimes when people fill in forms, they make mistakes. So, for example, maybe they there are lots of Ironside High School, and some people said Ironside High instead of High School. You want to make sure that they're all the same. So just double check that your data is correct. And if you look at, oh, look at oh, you see there's some person forgot, they thought they were born this year. So they, oh, they're not a baby, no baby can do a Google form. So they obviously forgot to change the year that they were born. So in this case, obviously you can either delete that record if it's a problem, but, or you can change it if you know or fan, maybe if that person was probably going to be in 2005 or something like that. So obviously make sure that your data is accurate. Look sure that there's no mistakes, that someone just filled in something incorrectly. Maybe they misspelled something here in the city. Um, because you don't, when you search, for example, on how many people were from Cape Town, you don't want there to be multiple versions of the spelling of Cape Town. Maybe they said Sea Town and stuff like that. So make sure that your data is nice and what I like to refer to as clean. Um, so it's particularly your biographical data. That's where you, but the rest of it should be fine. Okay. So that's my raw data. Now the next step, it's going to be come, it comes down to your preference. Lots of teachers do it in different ways. Some teachers like just this to be uh, where your information is. And then they create another sheet over here for your summaries or your, your, whatever your data is going to be. So this is going to be for your summaries. So some people like to have just the summaries here. I personally like to have my original. I like to keep this as clean as possible. I don't want to edit it too much. So I actually am going to copy all of this data. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it in the summaries. So I'm going to paste it over here. Boom. So just paste it. Boom. So there we go. I've got all the data here. And then I can edit this data without it actually affecting this little bit of data here as well. So I, I will make this one look nice and pretty. Um, this is the one I'll use to import into access. But this is the one I look pretty, make pretty. And then at the bottom here, I do my summaries and stuff like that. There are lots of ways of doing it. Some people like to just do the summaries part. Yeah, it's up to you. Or you could have another separate sheet for just the summaries if you want that particular option. The reason why I also like to have it here is because I might do formulas on the data. Like, for example, I want to have a section where I have their age. So I want to actually make a new uh, column here and work out the age. So little things like that can be useful. Then I'm also going to make another sheet for my charts. So that's going to be for my charts. And then I'm going to make another sheet for my external data. Um, there'll be a video on how to do the external data. I think we'll do that actually next after this video. Okay, so we'll see how we can get those marks. So now let's look at the summary. So this, so this is my raw data. Um, so that's the initial setup. Now the other things I'm going to do to make it, to set it up, just to give you a bit of a, advice on how to make things easier for you later on. Now the one problem um, with, with the summaries, I'm going to make this look pretty, but I'll take away things I don't need. Like I don't need the timestamps. So I'm going to take that away, but look what I'm going to do. I'm actually not going to actually take it away completely. I'm actually going to give it a code. So I'm going to call it 
questionnaire questionnaire id let's call it questionnaire id and i'll tell you now what i'm going to do here i'm going to delete that data remember i'm not deleting the raw data i've kept the raw data normal but yeah under summary i'm going to i want to make like a, a little code for each of the questionnaires so i want this to be like q1 um, for example and then this will be q2 and stuff like that so you can do stuff like that and if you drag it down let's see what it does if we just drag it down see it does one two three four okay so now i don't want that so um, i don't want that because it thinks of Q as like quarters. So actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to make this Q5. So you see Q1 to 5, there's no fifth quarter. So then I'll drag that down and that'll make it a Q2, to two, Q20. Do something like this. Maybe you've got, for example, remember I said don't include the name of the person. If, there's a little, if you do by some chance have the name and you need the name of the person, please make sure that your field isn't called name. Give it like full name or so. There mustn't, or even if it's company name, don't, don't have name there. You mustn't have any headings with the word name. And sometimes it conflicts, or it, has a, it has a problem with access when you do use it in access. So don't have any fields called name. Rather call it company name or full name or something like that. So what I've done here is this little ID. Now, why, why have you done this? Well, the reason is because... I'm going to use this as a primary key when I get to my access later on. So I actually need to include this. I'm going to copy this actually. And I'm actually going to insert it over here. Insert copied cells so that it shifts cells to the right. We're going to shift it to the right. So there we go. So I've actually included this here. So I've got this over here. And the reason is when I ex import this into access, I now have something which is suitable for the primary key. That's one tick. Second tick, and this is important, I have something that can follow some sort of input mask. If you don't have anything that follows a, like a format, like an input mask, it's very difficult to find data that matches an input mask. At least, yeah, I've got one. I've got, it's a letter followed by a number, followed by potentially a second number. That sounds like an input mask. That will really help you to get the marks to make sure that you've got an input mask. I know it seems quite... Uh, planned and that but you want to make sure that you have opportunities to get that so that's what i'm going to do there in my raw data back to my summaries the other thing which and which is going to be a bit of a problem is these are very difficult when we do queries and stuff like that these headings these headings are fine but the questions are a bit of a problem so what i like to do is i like to take these headings hey these headings here i'm going to copy all of the headings i think they go till there i'm going to copy them boom copy and then over here, somewhere at the bottom, in my summary section, I'm actually going to, over here, I'm going to paste them, but I'm going to transpose them. Where's the transpose option? There's transpose. I think it's there. Where's transpose? There's transpose. There we go. So if I transpose it, boom, there we go. Sorry, I can see it. There, it copies them all down. And so this is going to be my Q1, my Q1. Or question one we can call it question one if you want i don't want it to get confused with um q1 there question one and i'll drag it down so there's question one now what i've done here now is because i've done that i now know what question one means and so, so i'm actually going to use these rather as my headings here so i'm rather going to have question one here okay so question one i'll make it like that there question one so it's the same. So you can do that. I would rather do that because it's going to make my life a lot easier when I get to access to start doing calculations and calculated fields instead of me having to type out the whole field. And I would then obviously take those. I'm going to copy them and paste that in my raw data as well. So I'm going to paste them there as well. So they're also there. So now I, know, I don't know what this question is, but at least I've got a record of it over here. If I go to the side, there we go. I can see question one was that. And so you can use this as part of your data. So there you can see, okay, so question one is that what the questions are. So that's what I recommend that you do. I don't like using spaces. That's why I made a question with no space, uh, but it's up to you if you want. I like to not have spaces in my data because that also makes problems. So like with date of birth, I'm actually going to change that to date underscore date of birth, just because it makes life easier when we're in access. And that seems to work. So those are the little things I recommend when you are setting up your spreadsheet that'll make your life easier when we get to the access. Those are the tips. So let's recap. So we first copied everything. Boom, boom, boom. Well, we got everything here. For, we copied it into a summaries. If you want to do that, if you if you don't, then obviously you just change the data here. But we had our summaries. Um, I then made a charts and external uh 
sheet for that information and then the little tips over here i made a questionnaire id you if you obviously if you don't have all the data here you would have to do it over here but make a questionnaire id so preferably a letter with a number because that makes it very nice for input masks okay because you can't do input masks on number fields so make it a nice text field so we want a question or if you got like maybe you want the first letter of the school with a one or whatever you could do that as well so that's some text functions so there we go i've got my my id um, i made sure that my headings or my questions are not long sentences i made a question one question two but keep track of what those questions are so you can write them down like that and make sure that your data is nice and clean before you copy them make sure that no one filled in something incorrectly and stuff like that so maybe it's a good idea to get more than 25 uh, questionnaires done just in case someone does do a terrible answer that you can delete that or stuff like that okay so that's the setup now on my, this one you can go ahead and make it look nice and pretty go follow the walkthrough videos from computer application technology they'll show you some tips in that but you can use some ways to make this look nice and pretty um, use for example freeze frames so you want to over here maybe come to view and you want to freeze some paint you maybe want to use some conditional formatting those are little ways that you can do it so there's the freeze frames always freeze the top row if you want or you could do that in the raw data or over here you can use some, for example some conditional formatting so different values have different colors or same with this so use some conditional formatting. that way you get the marks for those particular aspects okay so that should be enough information for you to go ahead and start making it look nice and pretty make sure to go to our youtube channel click on that subscribe leave a like leave a comment we'd love to hear from you um go look at our playlist you'll find other topics that could be useful to you in your schooling career and remember don't do it the long way do it the mr long way